In the past few episodes, we've built a user authentication and authorization system, which works, but the user interaction part of it does leave a little bit to be desired. I mean, you log in, it pops up an alert, and it doesn't take you anywhere. And then elsewhere in the app, we'll see that, okay, here we can edit this, and we hit save, and there's no notification that it actually saved. You just have to look and find it in the list and see that the changes were made. What both of these use cases have in common is that they would benefit from a notification system that could pop something up in an unobtrusive way just to let the user know like, hey, that action was completed or that action failed. And it wouldn't have to stop the world like an alert would. One way to accomplish this is with a snack bar. I've heard these called toasts or just plain notifications before. Uh, but whatever you call it, they're a nice little thing that pops up usually down here, sometimes up here, or to the right or left. There are options for all of that. But it pops up, the user can see it, but it doesn't stop them from interacting with the rest of the page. This is just what we need. And Vutify, which we're already using, has a component built for us. So here's what we're going to do today. In part one, we're going to create our first snack bar. And here we're going to get pretty heavy into the Vutify options and integrating that with our app. Then in parts two and three, uh, you'll be able to apply this no matter what type of snack bar or toast you use. So if you're not into Vutify, that's okay. As parts two and three will be useful for you as well. So we're going to have our app-wide snack bar in part two. And then in part three, we're going to have a multi-snack bar where we can have multiple notifications showing at once. In this first section, we'll be integrating Vutify's snack bar component into the edit workflow for our videos. So we hit save video and we want it to show a notification here saying, good job, you edited a video. So let's play around with the snack bar. And we can see that there is a playground here that lets us see how all the options work together without actually putting it in our app yet. So I hit show snack bar and it shows up here. We currently have the top option turned on. We take that off and it'll show on the bottom. And you'll notice that it disappeared uh, while we were talking. So we'll go ahead and set the timeout to zero and that will make it so it will never disappear. So we can keep playing with the options and we can put success, info, error, or an arbitrary color and it'll change the background color. Uh, Multi-line mobile and vertical mobile give us a little bit more room uh, if you like that style and we'll just leave it regular for now. And those are the basic options. I think for us, we're going to have it on the bottom, in the middle, and either have success, info, or error for now. Eventually we may customize those colors. Now let's integrate it into our code. We'll go ahead and grab the snack bar code. So it's just v snack bar, and then we can connect it to a model, which will determine whether it's shown or not. So we will go to our code and we will go to our admin video edit page and we'll put the snack bar in. It doesn't really matter where you put it because its placement will be determined by whether you have left, right, top, or bottom. But I like to put it at the end. So vmodel snack bar, we'll go ahead and import data and have snack bar equal to true. So that'll be true, it'll be showing. We will close the snack bar and we'll just have a short message, I'm a snack bar. And 
Let's see how this is. We'll go to an edit page and there we are. We've got a snack bar. It does disappear after a little while, so we can go ahead and fix that. Oftentimes we will want it to disappear after the default six seconds, but when we're working with it in a tutorial video, we'll want it sticking around so that we can look at it, mess with it, you know? And all right, looks like it's sticking around. And for some reason, uh, when I experimented with just doing it like this, it didn't work. Yeah, it actually does zero instead of what it's supposed to do, which is make it forever. Uh, but so yeah, I just do it like this. And that'll work out later when we do the timeout programmatically. Anyways, we've got it sticking around. Now let's go ahead and make it so that uh, we can close it. So we'll have the text of close here, make it a text button, and then on click, we'll have something very simple. We'll just set snack bar to false. Now we can close the snack bar and it works. But just displaying and closing a snack bar is not our actual goal. We want to notify the user that they have correctly uh, edited their video. So we will start with the snack bar equal to false and only display it when they have edited their video. And we'll also have a custom snack bar text, which we will display here. All right, so now we'll go ahead and in this method, we will comment out the routing for now. And we will set the snack bar equal to true when they save the video. And we'll set the snack bar text equal to you have edited your video, say successfully, edit your video. And then we'll have the name of the video. And we'll go ahead and pull this from our edit video store dispatch. All right, let's see this working. Hit save video. You have successfully edited your video. Awesome. But I would like to make this green. So let's go ahead and we can put this directly in here. So color equals success. Excellent. Now that we've got that working, let's go ahead and throw that uh, router redirect on there. We'll hit save and uh-oh, where did the snack bar go? The answer is that the snack bar didn't go anywhere. We did. We went away from the page where the snack bar was showing down here. And we went to another page that does not have a snack bar. So to fix this issue, what we need to do is to have an app-wide snack bar system. That's what we'll be doing in the next section. In the last section, we implemented a one-time use snack bar notification system in one component. Now we're going to expand that to the entire app and put it in four other instances where we need notifications. The first thing we need to do is take this out of our admin video edit and put it in our app.view. So we'll go ahead and once again, put it all the way at the bottom of our template. Our next order of business is getting the information from our admin video ed edit save method, save video method into app.view. And the best way to do that is through Vuex. So we'll go ahead and go to our Vuex store and we'll create a snack bar hash in the state. 
and then we'll go ahead and put our current stuff onto that snack bar hash. So we'll call our V model dot showing and here snack bar dot text. So now we have showing and text on a snack bar hash. Let's put some defaults in there just to see that it's working. And then to get it from our state, we'll have to add this to our map state. Now let's see, all right, good, it's working. And we can still close it. Now what we we'll wanna do is we'll go ahead and take out this default. And then in our admin video edit, instead of saving these, into a data where they're no longer used. We will call out to the store and we'll dispatch, uh, we'll call it uh, set snack bar. And then we'll pass in a hash of showing true and text as this. and then we'll do the router push as normal. So now we need to create this set snack bar action. And we'll just commit a mutation And then we'll create this mutation up here. All right, let's see if this works. So edit, we'll save. Excellent, it's working. So we originally put our snack bar in app.view so it could show up between screens. But as another effect of this, it can also be used by multiple instances. So let's go ahead and use this when creating, deleting a video, as well as when logging in and registering. So we will go to our uh, admin video create and Right in here, we will take this code and all right, successfully created a new video, video.name. And actually, so all of these are gonna have showing equal to true. So let's go ahead and remove that and put it as a default in our store. So down here we will set snack bar dot showing equal to true. All right, that should save a little bit of space. And then it's just one line that we can We'll go ahead and put it in our delete. And that is on our uh, admin video list. So we will find our delete video. Uh, we'll dispatch the delete video and successfully deleted your video, uh, video.name. We'll see if that works, if we still have access to the video. All right, so we will create a new video. I know I made a grammatical ex a mistake, but we're gonna be deleting this soon anyways. Okay, all right, excellent. And then we'll delete it. All right, so, okay, that's actually good. We do want the confirm and You've successfully deleted your video, a new videos. Good. Now we'll use it for login and registration. 
So here we'll replace this alert and we will go ahead and grab this and use that for the text. Remove the alert and then we'll go ahead and uh, having them on the same page is not a good user experience. So we will call to the router and we will push, uh, let's see, we could push there or if they're an admin. Yeah, let's go ahead and check if they're an admin. And if they're an admin, we'll push them to the admin videos page. So if user.admin, push them to admin slash videos. Otherwise, we'll go here. All right, let's test this out. We will log out and we will log in again. Excellent, it ha pops that up and it redirects us correctly. Now let's see what happens if we log in incorrectly. All right, so it's still got that alert. So let's replace that with a snack bar, except uh, this actually will probably not look good because it's gonna be green. We want it to show up in red because it's an error. So let's go ahead and add another option here. We'll make it error and then in our app.view, we will have our color equal to snackbar.color instead of just being success all the time. And so that means that we need to have success as our default unless we wanna go change everything we've already done. So let's go to our store. And here we will have a snackbar.color it will be equal to either snackbar.color or uh, success. So that'll be our default. Let's try this out now. So good, now it's red. And then we'll go ahead and test out that uh, success is our default. Good, it's working. Now we'll just go ahead and do this all for the registration page as well. So in our user registration, we will be replacing these alerts. And grab that. We will copy and paste it. We will have our color equal to error and our text equal to user.error for the uh, error case. And for this case, we will just copy the text that we had before, and there we go. We can go ahead and test this out, and we'll test this out with one that has not been registered. Okay, good. We'll actually want to redirect them So now we'll push them to the main page on success. We'll try that again. Uh oh, apparently I had probably probably accidentally registered that gibberish before, but we saw that it was working and it works correctly here too. Good stuff. So this is great. We have one snack bar component that we can reuse in five different places and we can keep on reusing it basically as much as we want. But there is still one issue and we'll cover that in the next section. Let's say that we are trying to log in and we put in a password, an email combination that's not correct. Okay, we close it. We try another combination, still not correct. We try another one, we hit login, 
And hey, did our app do anything? The answer is yes, it did. But this notification stays the same. And that's because there's only ever one snack bar notification showing at a time in our current setup. If we wanted to give better feedback, it could start stacking these up. And you could see, you hit login, okay, there's a new one. So the system did something. Stacking notifications will also be useful in other situations where notifications are coming at you fast or if they might be coming from the server, for example. So in this section, we're going to implement that. This will start in our store. So instead of snack bar being a hash, we'll have snack bars, plural, being an array. And then in our mutations, we need to set snack bars equal to state.snackbars with the newest snack bar concatenated on. And that is all the changes we'll have to make this store. So we've got now someone calls uh, set snack bar and it will add to the store instead of replacing the previous one. Now we need to get it working in our template. So of course we will get snack bars plural from the state and we're going to need to add a v4. So for a snack bar in snack bars, and then we'll have to define our key and a snack bar dot text would be good, but sometimes it will show the same thing. So we'll just add a math dot random to our snack bar dot text. All right. So now this should be showing multiple snack bars. Let's go ahead and take a look. We'll go ahead and log in. All right, and then we'll edit. And uh-oh, it appears like it's not showing multiple snack bars. But let's investigate. Okay, so it actually is showing three of them, but they are all stacked on top of each other. So if you hit close, close, all right, all three are there. So what we want to do is we want to space them so each one goes on top of the last. So to do this, in our v4, we will get our index in addition to the snack bar object. And then we'll bind to the style and we will have it display a certain number of pixels from the bottom. And we'll base this on the index. So it'll be index times 60. And that'll be number of pixels. And so let's give this a try. We will save a video. Uh-oh. So it is working, kind of, except it appears that this is not the first one. The index is actually higher because the three we closed are already counted. So what we want to do is we want to only show the ones, uh, we'll only take into account the ones that are showing. So what we could do is here we could just call filter and only show the ones where they're showing. And now when we do that, they are going down to the bottom. And if we close one out, the other two slide down. Now they are a little too close to the bottom. So let's go ahead and just add, we'll say eight. And I think the order of operations would be correct anyways, but might as well be safe. Okay, that looks a little better with the spacing. All right, so this is our implementation. Now, I'll be honest, I don't really love uh, putting the style there directly in the template, especially doing the calculations like this. But Vutify sets the bottom property, and therefore, in order to have our stack correctly, we have to, instead of 
you know, having container that's in the bottom and having them flow normally, we have to set the bottom on each of these individually. If you're using a different UI library or creating your own, you may be able to get a more elegant solution. Also, now that we're stacking stuff, it is important, well, more important now that some stuff does disappear on its own. So we'll go ahead and create an extra timeout uh, property. And so we can set stuff. The default's gonna be 6,000 if this is null. But for the stuff we want to stick around, then we can set it as zero. And that's it for our snack bar and notifications feature for now. I think this is gonna be a much better experience for our users and it'll allow us to create new features in the future. All right, and now that we're done, let's review what we learned. We got a snack bar component from Beautify that if you break it down and remove all the stuff that we added, it has a color, and that can be success, error, info, or a custom color. And it has a timeout, which is how long it goes before it disappears. The default is 6,000, uh, which is in milliseconds. And if you set it to zero, then it will stay up there until the user closes it manually. And then there's V model, which is where it stores whether it's showing or not. And we have our V button here. You click close and it sets showing to false. Snack bars are stored in our store state and they can be added using the set snack bar mutation, which is called in the set snack, snack bar action. There are four properties on each of these, showing, timeout, color, and text. Uh, showing, when you create a new snack bar, is automatically set to true. Uh, color has a default of success, and then the timeout has a inherent default, if it's null, of 6,000 milliseconds. Text is the only one that you really, really need to include when you're calling set snack bar. In user login, we have an example of calling set snack bar. And here we have on the error, it sets the color to error and then the text to the uh, text of whatever the error is. And then on success, it also calls set snack bar and it has as text, thank you for signing in. And then it redirects to the correct place. So we're able to create a new notification snack bar just with one line and we're able to do it anywhere in our app and it'll display in app.view. Finally, we looped through all of our snack bars, well, all the ones that were showing, and then we displayed all of them, stacking them up from the bottom. And that's it for today. I hope you learned as much as I did. So be sure to check in next time where what I think we'll be doing is, so you remember uh, the video watch state? and how it sets it to local storage? Well, the only reason we set it to local storage was because we didn't have a user session, but now we do. And so now we're gonna save it to the user on the server so that a user can go between computers and get which videos they've watched. All right, so I'm looking forward to it. I will see you then. And until then, uh, click subscribe so you'll get notified uh, next time the video comes out.